Hello and welcome. You'll notice I'm in a different place this day. I'm at the Chestnut Residence and I want to welcome you to our time together and welcome our lecture for today, Christine Chestnut, who will share in this meditation. Welcome and have a blessed day. Please join me in the call to worship. We thank you, O oh God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your mighty miracles. God says, at this time I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps its foundation firm. I warn the proud, stop your boasting. I told the wicked, don't raise your fist. Don't lift your fist in defiance at the heavens or speak with rebellious arrogance. It is God alone who judges. He decided who will rise and who will fall. But as for me, I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Israel. For God says, I will cut off the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. As we gather today, I want us to share with each other a greeting that Christ gave whenever Jesus met people. A simple Hebrew word that has depths of meaning. The word is shalom. It means welcome. How are you? It means goodbye. It means well-being. And it ultimately means peace. Peace be with you and with me this day. So I invite you now at home to share with me that shalom. Shalom in Christ. Shalom. And this day, as we gather here to meditate and reflect, we light this candle, which is artificial because of children at Robert's house, a child. But remember that we light this candle as a memorial for those who have died from this disease, the COVID virus, those families who are mourning, those who are infected and their families. Remember those who are fighting for racial dignity and respect in our culture and country. Remember those who are lost in mind and spirit and hope. We light the candle, and as I've said from John's Gospel, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never, never put it out. The light shines for us this day. And I invite you now, as we gather, to share with me our prayer preparation for this day. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, allow me to lean on you in times of weakness, in times of strength, in times of sorrow, in times of confusion, in times of clarity, in times of happiness and joy. Continue to be my rock. Lead me not into temptation, but into your marvelous light. Continue to hold my hand and carry me forward. Be thou my wisdom, wisdom. Be thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. This is my prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The scripture lesson for today is from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And so end of the reading. I want to thank Christine for reading our scripture lesson this day. It is a well-known text in the Hebrew Bible from Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is, if you will, a lecture to people. The person who gives it is called the Kohoth, or the preacher, or the instructor. And this passage that she read, for everything there's a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, is not about God directly, it's about us. About what we experience in our lives and what we go through. There is a time. A time for every purpose. But later in the chapter, it reads something more. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, followed by this. I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to, to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, our minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from beginning to the end. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added nor anything taken away. God has done it so that it all should be in awe before him. It doesn't say this way in the text. This is a time of chaos. Time of chaos in terms of the pandemic. Time of chaos in terms of employment and occupation time of chaos in our government. It is a time. It is not a good time. To say the least, it is a sad time. At best, a terrible time. But one of the things is that God has a plan. That's what is in Ecclesiastes. To talk about that plan, that this will be a time that we shall not only pass through, but pass over to a time which would make a difference, a time of hope, a time of peace, a time of well-being, a time of security, a time of caring for all the people of this nation and indeed the world. Ecclesiastes tells us a time. We are part of this time, but we're not stuck in this time. We can go forward. That there will be a time of healing when the pandemic shall pass. Hopefully a vaccine will be in place. Those of who are ill can find better treatments and cures. It's a time we're looking forward to in which people will be able to go back to their occupations, their employments, their careers, 
and see a future for themselves and for their families and for their friends. God knows the future. And God has a plan even for that future. And a time for our government to find, how should I say it, its respect for its citizens. We cannot control, as I've said often enough, what we can't control. But we can be forces for change to touch our lives together like this day, this meditation, is a gift to all of us that we can share with one another, with friends and neighbors. It's a gift of God to us. God's presence is with us now. We are not alone. The hand of God is there to lead. The arms of Christ are there to embrace. And the power of the Holy Spirit is within us to give us strength and courage. May God bless you. May Christ give you shalom. And may the Holy Spirit that is within be shared and empower you. God bless you this day. God be with you this day. And as we journey forth, may be we the sharers of the good news of faith, hope, and love. Amen. This morning as we gather for prayer, I ask that we remember in prayer those who are suffering from the COVID pandemic, those who are experiencing inequality in their life, racially or because of gender. To remember our nation in prayer, which deeply needs our prayers, deeply needs our courage and strength, and to remember ourselves, each one of us, in prayer, and our friends and neighbors and loved ones who are journeying with us in this time of uncertainty, fear, and anxiety. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving God, caring God, you who created each of us in your image, each of us who has your breath of life when we were born. We pray this day for your hand to reach out, as our prayer preparation said, to hold us, hold us, put your arms around us, and give us care. We pray for that care for those who are ill and suffering from the pandemic, their friends and family, to be with them. To put your arms around those who experience prejudice and hatred, anger and violence. To give them hope, courage and strength. And also to hold their hands to lead them away from danger. We ask your prayers this day, we pray this day for you, to you, our nation. Our nation has many needs and concerns. We ask you to bless this nation and give it help and healing, to give wisdom and knowledge to those who lead, and to give dignity to those who lead, to lead with strength and courage and purpose to the well-being of your children, your people. We pray this day for our needs for our hopes and expectations, for our care, for our loved ones. O oh God in Christ, hear our prayer this day. Amen.
Let us share together this day the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we close our time together, I want to thank Christine for being with us and sharing us in this meditation. I am thankful that you have joined with me this morning in sharing our meditation. And may God guide you and lead you with the shalom of Christ within you, the peace of Christ upon you, and the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Have a good week, and God bless. Amen. Please join me in the benediction. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Go in peace. Amen.